I'm Kathy. This is my husband Dane and our little girl Nova. We recently made the move to Perth, Australia and have been here about a month now. Today I'll talk about the things I wish I knew before we made the move to Perth. I hope you enjoyed today's video and the points are useful. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is the first video that's actually kicking off my channel about life in Australia and I'm super excited to get into the things I wish I knew before I moved to Perth, WA. I love you. See, when we arrived, we were aware that there was a house shortage at present. A lot of people have made the move to Perth. So we were all fired up and we didn't quite realize how hectic it really is. Um, you have to put yourself out there for a lot of viewings. And when you arrive at a viewing for a house, there are up to 20 or 30 people who are submitting applications. So it is a very competitive market. And my only advice would be have all your paperwork in order. Go onto realestate.com and um, au and they do have a helpful list that you can download everything you need for rental applications some of the documents are hard to come by and that you actually need to be in australia to already have like a tax number or um your the first paycheck things like that so but get what you can ready so by the time you arrive in perth you've already got the bulk of the paperwork sorted out I will be doing a short video on how to boost your application and some helpful things we did um, that the agent said were, were positive impact on our applications. We did have multiple um, applications that were unsuccessful and it does tend to you get into a bit of a bidding war in this um, place at the moment where people just start throwing money at it like I'm going to pay an extra $40 or $50 a week. So you'll submit your application and you won't get it, not because you're a poor candidate, but because someone's willing to throw more money at the property. Then um, in that sort of grouping at the same point, I put car shortages. So this was something we did not anticipate. Rent a car on the weekends if we wanted to do a bit of touring and go out of the city for a bit. And we did not realize that there would be a massive shortage of rental cars. So we were phoning companies and they were like, oh yeah, we, we can give you guys a car in two weeks time. I would recommend booking your car before you even get to Perth, picking it up when you land at the airport and starting your journey with a car. The public transport is amazing in the city. They've got buses and trains, but I just found when you're actually trying to look for a house, go to multiple viewings, you, you need your independence. Um, even more so if you've got children, because with your stroller missioning around the whole time, going to viewings with public transport is, it's a lot to handle. So in our case, we went to a dealer to buy a new car and the current waiting periods are insane. It's like up to six months shipping with your car is only going to arrive um, sort of in six months time. So you might as well commit to a long lease from the get go, have wheels and you can enjoy the new city and be independent. The second point that I wish I had known, because it would have saved me so much worrying, um, basically the community support we've encountered in the city. So we were able to move from a service department that my husband's employer put us in for the first three weeks. So when we moved into our first rental and our shipping container hasn't arrived yet, we, that's my dog snoring, a Lula. Anyways, our shipping container hadn't arrived yet. We ended up having to um, like figure out what to do with regards to white goods and appliances. So I was told that there's some lovely community groups like Per Suburb on Facebook. So I hopped on one of those groups and I did a post and said, is anyone prepared to lend us a few white goods, like a washing machine, a TV, um, things like that. And literally within an hour, I had everything, a fridge, People were so generous, so kind, and I will be returning all their items with a box of chocolates to say thank you. But um, yeah, just blown away by how willing people are to help and how there's this great sense of community around you from the get-go. So if you're stressing about that, um, you'll be surprised, pleasantly surprised at the random acts of kindness you're going to see around the city.
quite expensive. Now I realize this is all relative. Um, if you're coming from perhaps another first world country, um, it might not be the case for things like takeaways or any sort of little like service oriented um, purchase. But for us coming from South Africa and previously Dubai, um, things like food delivery is hugely expensive here and we way under budget at our first month. So Uber and they've got a service called DD here, which is Uber as well. Um, basically, they were quite a lot more expensive and compared to South Africa and Dubai, we thought that would be our main mode of transport when we needed to get to and from house viewings or if we wanted to get out and about on the weekend, download the app and check out what sort of routes you might be traveling with Ubers and DDs and see what sort of budgeting we should put in place for that. We arrived sort of the week before Easter weekend and Easter weekend came and we had a lovely four day holiday. We were so excited to get out and about and friends of ours actually mentioned that don't go and eat out at cafes or restaurants because there's like a 20% surcharge. So basically anyone who's working over those public holiday hours, they are getting paid a little bit extra as they should. Um, but you as the end consumer are the one paying for that. So don't plan to eat out the whole weekend and you'll probably have to book in advance as well because the result is due to the labor cost, a lot of places just prefer to close for public holidays than keep staff on and have to pay everybody. So do a bit of homework and put in your budget. If you're going to go do a nice lunch or something like that on a public holiday, expect to pay a bit more. low-cost children's activities that are out there in Perth. So the libraries, um, community libraries, host rhyme times and story times where you can take your little one and enjoy um, a bit of downtime and let someone else entertain them for you for a bit. You're involved, you're there, but it's great not to have to think of, you know, something to do the whole time. So those are great. Um, and then they also do baby gym sessions and that's for babies who are quite young from six months You can join a baby gym session. I do believe the gym sessions have a small cost. I think it's nine dollars um, to partake but so worth it and um, Then there are a lot of free things to do around as well. I mean if you want to go to The parks are fabulous. There's so many different types of parks and parks for different age groups um, I went to a lovely park that was so well suited to my 18 month old. She couldn't fall off easily, but she could independently play on a jungle gym. Um, so they designed it that way, which was just amazing. That was in um, the CBD, just opposite uh, the Queen's Gardens, Queen Victoria's Gardens. Beautiful. And then if you also take older kiddies, they've got what they call um, outdoor sort of play parks where they've done like mud guard, mud kitchens and natural streams where kids can just get wet and play in the mud and the sand and it's a lot more natural. They've done like tree stump type jungle gyms. Um, so yeah, there's just so much to, to get out and do. I recommend looking at the community you plan on, on living in and maybe also the area you're going to be staying in when you first arrive and try and find your local kids activities you're gonna find something and it's a great way to also get out and meet other moms and kids your child's age I did sort of know but I think I didn't really get it until I felt it on my skin and that is the Sun in Perth and in WA is incredibly strong we need to be super careful in this part of the world. Um, invest in quality broad spectrum SPF before you actually get here uh, for the whole family. Alternatively, Australia has some great uh, products. Once you do arrive here, you could go. Most of the pharmacies are so well stocked with SPF because of the environment. Um, but make that a priority and make sure you've got hats for the kids, hats for yourself. Like you do not mess around with the sun here. Because we're animal lovers and we have our fur baby Amula who's taking this long journey with us, just a few things we've noted with them. So there is actually an Uber pet service in Perth, which I just think is so cool. 
They allow you to bring your pet along on your rides. It's really helpful if you don't have wheels yet um, and you need to get somewhere a little bit further than walking distance. Uh, pets are obviously not allowed on public transport. So yeah, pet Uber, who would have thought? It's very easy to use. You go on your Uber app, you just scroll down and select, um, basically where you select the type of Uber, there's a pet Uber there. So make use of that, guys, it's great. Then we were blown away at how pet friendly the city is, how many restaurants, cafes, just public spaces you can take your dog with you. Um, that's really important for us as a family. We love to take Avila with us and include her in what we're doing. And we can pretty much do that everywhere. Um, at outdoor shopping centers, you can even take your pet to Bunnings, which is like the, the sort of builder's warehouse if you're South African, or I guess the Ace Hardware if you're from Dubai. Um, yeah, you take your pet to the hardware store. So really cool and we're enjoying that. And then we recently went up to Yanchep uh, National Park to go see kangaroos and koala bears. And I did not know this, but koala bears are not actually indigenous or endemic of WA. So there is that. Should have read up about that, but there you go. And the grey kangaroo, the western grey kangaroo, which is what we find here naturally, they're naturally occurring, um, they're quite small. Like my husband and I kept looking at each other because we didn't want to make the mistake of calling a kangaroo a wallaby. Yeah, anyways, irrelevant, but just so as you know, um, a few fun facts about animals there. Guys, thanks so much for joining in with my video today. I really hope these points were enlightening and come in handy. If you're planning your move or if you've just touched down in Perth, I hope to catch you in my next one. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it.